My name is Amal Nergadkar, I'm the CEO of Patient Prism and uh, uh, here we have on our studios Rachel Wall from Inspired Hygiene and uh, we're having wonderful discussions about all things hygiene and how to optimize hygiene departments, how to motivate hygienists to perform at their best, how to uh, establish perio programs and, and the three Ps. We've talked a lot and I think in this segment I want to talk about inspiring, inspiration. Um, how do we motivate and inspire hygienists uh, to really uh, do their best and, and, and obviously part of the motivation comes from compensation. Mm -hmm. Um, you want to uh, have a compensation model for hygienists or anybody in the organization that truly incentivizes for them them to do the right thing and and and, and be productive and, and and make money right everybody all of us want to uh, have rewarding careers so what have you seen in terms of the best practices when it comes to um, compensation models for hygienists mm, yeah so with working with practices all over the country, we've seen a lot of different things from, sure. you know, from hourly or salary to 100% commission and sure. everything in between. Okay. So as far as things that I've seen that are pretty innovative, um, here are a couple. One, uh, one practice that we worked with a few years back in Texas uh, had a large uh, hygiene department, five or six hygienists, and they had a pooled commission model. Okay. So essentially, all of the hygiene production went into one big pool. One big pool, okay. And they all made a certain percentage of that. Let's say it was 30% okay. of whatever that production was, and they, that was divided between all the hygienists. Okay. So it created um, a lot of teamwork between the hygiene department. Okay. Um, also, when they would hire a new hygienist, it was interesting because they, they kind of had to, there was some training that would take place. Um, the hygienist would naturally try to nurture this person, sure. but they had to really prove themselves before they could enter the pool, right? Okay. So they were paid separately until they got up to a certain point certain where they could point, produce yeah. and contribute. Yeah, so that was really interesting and seemed to work well for that practice. Okay. Uh, the other thing that we've seen that's been really, uh, actually worked really well is a tiered hourly pay based on production. So, for example, in this one specific instance, uh, there was a hygienist that had been with this practice for a long time, okay. uh, was just really a leader in the practice, okay. and the dentist just wanted to give her incentives on just performance and um, just being that leader. Sure. And, you know, you always want to retain your best talent of course. and make sure that they feel like they are appreciated and that they, they you know, have a good gig, right? Sure, sure. So this was, you know, once this hygienist achieved this certain production sure. uh, set point okay. for a certain period of time, which was typically a couple months, okay. then she would elevate to this next tier of production of uh, hourly pay. Oh, nice. Yeah. Okay. And then she would maintain that, and when she got to the next level of production, she would elevate to the next tier, so that wow. there was always something that could happen, and she might increase a couple times a year. Okay. you know, based on wherever she was. Mm. So it gave her something to look for. And it was also within range of keeping that hygienist profitable for the practice, right? So the compensation was, was um, set at a point that would guarantee if she produced this amount that there would be profit for the practice. Of course, okay? of course. Um, another thing that we've seen a lot is base plus commission. So the hygienists yeah. have a base. Sure. So that, you know, if there is a patient that doesn't show, you know, the thing that we want to avoid is the hygienist clocking out and kind of checking out of the practice because that really affects morale and affects teamwork. Sure. And we, um, we see that sometimes with these commission-based programs. Um, I will say that the highest producing hygienists that we typically see have some type of commission in place. Sure. I will also say that we see the most issues with um, commission-based programs. In other words, things like clocking out when there's not a patient, maybe not helping out the team as much because they feel like if they stay clocked in, it counts against their commission sure. rate. Um, you know, there are, there are pros and cons to every type of compensation model, no matter what it is. Right. Um, but that's the one where I think that if you're going to move into that realm, you've got to have a really clear written um, agreement. Sure right, between the hygienist and the practice owner sure. on here, here is what this means, and we, we still have these expectations. Okay. You know, and there could be some things that are expectations of the business owner that we're gonna do everything we can to, 
you know, provide a, a productive schedule for you. Sure. And our expectations are you are part of this team. And, and even if you don't have a patient, right, we all want to support you and we expect you to support the team. Sure. And doing what's involved there, we expect um, support of the doctor's production as well. Sure. So hygiene production can't come um, uh, at the expense of the doctor production. Sure. Um, you know, we expect you to complete all of your treatment notes. One thing that I noticed once was a hygienist that was a great hygienist. Um, she was on commission mm -hmm. and um, was packing the patients in so tightly into her schedule that she was not completing her treatment notes. <clears throat> so there would right. be days where these things oh weren't goodness. happening. Okay. So we realized that. And then they also had a team uh, bonus. So we said, you, in order to qualify for the team bonus, mm -hmm. you must do these things and your notes must be complete. Sure. To the, the level day. that they need to be every day. So I would say there should be certain things to qualify for that commission that are in place. So you need a system. I mean, I mean, I think I agree with you. If it's pure commission, um, it's going to be, you know, there's incentive to kind of do what the hygienist did earlier or, or just to kind of over-treat sometimes. Uh, have you seen that ever? You know, I've seen that less. Okay. Cool. I don't know that I've seen that so much as I've seen maybe some of these other workarounds or things to, to do to increase. Because, you know, what's interesting, it happens if they, when they really start to pack the schedule, then often the diagnostics, they're missing the boat, right? Because they right. could actually make more if they were doing the proper diagnostics. Correct. And that, that could lead to, you're right, that, that could lead to them packing them so tightly that, that there's no time left for any... It's just profies. Any, any profies, yeah. absolutely. So the other thing that we've done um, recently, more, more than in the past, is we've helped dentists overcome some unhealthy inherited hygiene compensation plans. So as a CPA, right. you may have seen this in the past, where a dentist will purchase a practice and uh, I can think of a specific example of that the um, hygienists were making 50% commission. Wow. Well, when we look at that three to one, right, we've talked about the hygienist should be producing three times, three times yeah. right, the, the um, compensation. Sure. A third of that production can go to hygiene compensation. Correct. A third goes to overhead. Sure. Right? Instruments. All the other stuff, yeah. Electricity for the operatory. All of those things that it takes to run that hygiene department. And then there should be at least a third that's left over for profit. Right. Right? How do, how do you reinvest in your team? Right. How do you, you know, compensate the owner and things like that? Sure. So if they're at 50% commission. There's no way. They're breaking even. That's it. Right. Right? At, at best, right? At if best. nothing goes wrong, I mean, if you're doing at 50% right. commission, if you're doing all pro fees, then you're losing money. Yeah. Uh, potentially. Yes. Um, because it's uh, the, the, the other stuff, you know, you're preventing uh, more profitable patients or, or restorative stuff that patients need from happening. Yes. Because, uh, and that's exactly what was happening is they, okay. it was all pro fees. So what we did, and the dentist decided, he said, you know, I really want these hygienists to stay in my practice, I value them. Sure. And for the health of this business, this is not sustainable. Sure. So what we did is we helped tier, tier the compensation level down sure. while we helped them increase production. Absolutely. And they actually ended up making, making more, more money. Making more money because now they're, now they're doing more diagnosis of periodontal yes. disease, they're doing paro maintenance and, and so forth. So these are great yeah. models and I, I'm glad you guys helped with, with, with looking at the hygiene compensation model, settled practices, and, 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 and with having looked at hundreds of practices, you were able to help the, the, these offices uh, in, in making sure the hygienists are appropriately incentivized yeah. with the right compensation yeah. model. Yep. So thank you for this discussion. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.